Welcome to the Kylie Koo Studio. In the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group, we are continuing with our July prompt of colour. And our challenge for this week is complementary colours. Now, I'll say a bit more about complementary colours in just a moment. But I've decided for my project this week, I'm going to do some mixed media ATCs, artist trading cards. Now that first one didn't stamp very well, so I'm just going to use that as a kind of mop up card. So I've picked two stamps, one's a butterfly, one is just a simple flower design. I'm stamping onto some ATC sized paper, but I'm actually going to cut these out in just a moment. So what do we mean by complementary colours? Well, complementary colours are the colours that sit opposite each other on the colour wheel. Now, I will show you a kind of quick demonstration of how to get a complementary colour of the three primary colours just shortly. But what I wanted to do first was to get all my cards prepped. So I'm doing three butterflies and three flowers. So this week what we're saying is do complementary colours, but you can also use black and white as well. So I'm actually going to work with two different lots of colours. I realised that I hadn't kind of heat set the ink, so I'm doing that now. And here I have these cut out. I just wanted to have a little bit of kind of texture on my ATCs and they will just stand proud ever so slightly. But I'm also taking some old dictionary pages and I'm just going to glue these down and then I'll glue the butterfly or the flower on top. Just using this Galleria uh, gloss medium, I nearly always use matte medium, occasionally I'll use the gloss. I realised I've actually got a couple of different tubs of this uh, so I thought you know, I'm going to get on and use it rather than opening another matte medium. So just gluing all my dictionary paper down first and giving it a very quick dry. I'm then just going to use some white craft paint. This is just a hobby craft one. Water it down slightly and I just want to knock back that text just ever so slightly. I'm not going to cover it over. Some of this will get covered over in the process when I'm applying paint, but I just want to knock it back that little bit. And again, I'll dry them at this stage. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same gloss medium and I'm just going to glue into place my butterflies and my flowers. Now, I'm going to do position each one ever so slightly differently because I want each little card to be unique. Although they're made up of the same components, each one will look different. So each one will be one of a kind. Once they're stuck down, I am giving them another dry. Now they're still slightly tacky, but what I'm doing now is to take the stencil from Snip Art, uh, which I got through Craftbox UK. I'm also using this Pabio modelling paste. Now, you know, if you wanted to make something similar, you don't need to use modelling paste. You could just use gesso for this or even a layer of paint. Again, I just want something to create a bit of texture on my cards, a bit of interest. Because today I'm going to be using some fluid acrylics and I want those acrylics to kind of run in, around and of course over the modelling paste. Just scrape up the excess each time and I just want a little bit on each card as far as possible trying not to get it on top of either the butterfly or the flower. Now that one kind of squished a little bit, I don't know how I managed that and you'll see in a moment I go back to it, I wasn't happy with it so all I'm doing is taking a piece of towel and wiping it off and I'm just going to reapply that. 
Now the modelling paste can take a little while to dry. I will give it a quick blast with my heat tool, but then I'm going to put them to the side and just say a little bit more about complementary colours. Now I did there just scrape the excess that was left on my mat. I just put it onto that throwaway card, that drop card. So I start the drying process and then I will basically put them off to the side in the hope that they'll dry more over the next few minutes. So just a quick demo about complementary colours. So I'm going to set out some blue, some red and some yellow here. And this blue is just about finished. This was a, a cad red. It doesn't matter though, It will. it's close enough to a kind of primary that you'll be able to see what I mean. So this is really an easy way to find out the primary colours and their complements. So my top line, I've got my blue, I've got my red and I've got my yellow. And under each of those colours, I'm putting the other two colours. So under the blue, I've got red and yellow. Under the red, I've got yellow and blue. And under the yellow, I've got red and blue. So primary colours on the top layer and then the other two colours underneath. And what I'll do is I'll mix the two colours underneath. Now I'm just going to add a little bit more yellow to that, but what you'll see I've got here is orange and the complementary colour of blue is orange. So the easy way to find the opposite colour of the primary colours is just to take the two other primary colours and mix them together. So we'll do it again here with the next one. So we have red. So I'll now mix yellow and blue together and that will give me green. So green is the complementary colour of red. And then likewise I'll do the same under the yellow. And that is a kind of violet colour. It's not showing up too violet-y. I, uh, I think I had a bit more blue than red there, but it is a violet, it is a purple. And of course it does depend on how your actual initial primary colour is made up. So just spreading these about a bit. And the idea about complementary colours is that when they're next to each other, they are supposed to be at their most intense. So when you put two compl complementary colours against each other, that's when you see them at their most intense. Started to rub a bit of green in there, but never mind. Now let's just say that you don't have all of these. Let's say you have a pink, but you don't have a red. Put too much out there, just taking a little bit back. So you may recall if you watched my video last week that I talked about tints and tones and shades. Well, all the pink is is a red tinted. So if I wanted to get something that was closer to that pink in terms of its value, then I would just add a little bit white to its complementary colour. So you can see there that those are closer in terms of their value. And you can do that with any of the colours. Now today I'm going to work with a red-green combo and a yellow-violet combo. Violet is, is also purple. So I'm using DecoArt Fluid Acrylics and I'm going to use quinacridone gold and quinacridone violet because the quinacridone gold is quite red in colour. And I'm also going to use transparent yellow iron oxide and thalo green yellow. And I think these are close enough in terms of being, you know, the red, green and the yellow violet. So I'm starting by putting some of my colour down onto my card. I'm spraying some water over it. You know, these are fluid anyway, but I want this to be quite drippy and free flowing. So just using a brush to move it about a little bit. And I want it to very much get in and around the texture paste that I've put down. 
And of course, I want it to cover the paper underneath and also to go on to my flower and the butterfly when I come to do that. And there again, I've just got my piece of waste card that uh, the one that I hadn't properly stamped on to begin with. And I'm just letting the paints run off and onto that. Now, what I'll do is every time I apply a colour, I will dry it as far as possible because I don't want to put the next colour on and it's simply all to blend into it to one colour. I want some degree of definition between them, albeit I want them to kind of intermingle. So, as I say, I'm going to dry it each, each stage. I will move between the flowers and the butterflies just as I leave things to dry. So, I'm going to put this next bit on to a bit of music because there's not a lot more that I can say at this stage, but you'll just see me building up the colour. Now, these are not quite dry yet and the texture paste isn't fully dry yet, but what I'm going to do now is to put on some white splatters. To me, it just needs white to help bring that out. So just using my fan brush to do that. 
What I will do once these are fully dry is to put a backing on them, so a nice clean card on the back which will help thicken them up and I will also put a word onto them, probably just use a Tim Holtz word and I will insert a copy of them, a photo of them at the very end just showing you how they turned out. So here's a quick look just now. So you can see the different colours, how they're blending together. I like the fact that their the colours are merging into each other. I like the texture paste. I did get too close to it at times when I was heating it and it bubbled a little bit, but that's fine. I quite like it that way. So I will, of course, leave a link to Nina's video below. And that one, the mop-up card, is my favourite, but that wasn't part of the prompt, so never mind. But I'll leave a, an image now just to let you see how they turned out. So thanks so much for watching. Do take care. Bye for now.